Hello there, this is Avantish from the Deep Sky Hunter. Do you know that with your telescope and camera, you can use your images to measure how big things are actually in space? So today, I want to dabble my feet into uh, doing some cool calculations, and I thought I'd take the moon for the reference. So today we're going to try measuring some craters on the moon with the help of some very basic trigonometry and maths. So I don't want to spend more time talking about acquisition and my plans for imaging, uh, but my plan mainly is to take a wide field shot of the moon uh, and get it all the way to as wide as I can. I can't really get it too wide because my camera does have a very small sensor, but at least if we know the field of view of our camera, which we do, luckily, we can use that to measure the sizes of the individual craters. So the good news is that today we have a first quarter moon out tonight, making it ideal for lunar photography. So my plan is to get some wide shots and then some nice close-ups on those craters to you know just just to show you guys what the individual craters are so hopefully things go well so in order to use the parallax method we need to know two important parameters one which is the apparent diameter of the crater on the moon and two which is the accurate distance of the moon so apparent diameter is basically size of an object from your field of view so, note that it is not the true size of the object, but rather the amount of space it covers in your vision. So we usually measure this in degrees, minutes, or seconds. So, one degree has about 60 minutes of arc, and one minute of arc has about 60 seconds of arc. The moon in our night sky spans about 0.5 degrees, or 30 arc minutes precisely and craters on the moon are going to be a lot smaller than that so we'll have to use software to figure out how small those craters are and once we know the angular diameter we can just look up at the distance and use our formulas to get the distance. So here's my final image of the moon right here and you must have noticed it is not a complete uh, disk of the moon. Uh, I've only got a small portion of it so this is the field of view of my camera and telescope combination just if you like. So my focal length is about 650 millimeters and my camera is a ZWO ASI 224MC with a resolution of 1304 by 976 pixels in an array. So here I have scaled up the resolution, but one thing to keep in mind is that make sure that the aspect ratio of your image is the same. So I've not cropped the image yet, and make sure you don't do that either because you, ha you need to make sure that the size of the entire image is the same as that fresh out of the camera. So in this case, uh, you can see the field of view, which is pretty similar. So in order to do this calculation, you need to know the field of view in arc minutes. So one arc minute is about 1 60th of a degree. And this camera has a field of view of about 25.39 by 19.04 arc minutes. So the field of view would depend on the focal length of your optics. If the focal length is longer, then you'll have a very narrow field of view. And make sure that you preserve the field of view by not cropping your image. So this is very important. OK, so as you can see, I'm taking uh, notes with the help of Notepad to 
just to give you a bit of a guide. So the dimensions of the image is about 2600 pixels in terms of width and 1946 pixels in height. So the first step is to measure the size of your crater. Now, in, in my case, I'm going to measure this crater right here. You can see this one. So now that we already know how many pixels wide our image is, we can use the image measurement tool here in GIMP. So this is a free software and this tool is right here. You can use it to measure how many pixels wide a portion or even a full part of your image is for that matter. So I'm gonna draw a line right, a very rough line from here. Okay. So that gives it about 138.7 pixels in size. So that's the diameter of this crater with respect to the entire image. So note that down and that's going to help you a lot to find it. All right. So the crater that we are trying to measure is right here. This is called the Ptolemaeus crater and its diameter is pretty huge compared to other craters that we see especially when you look at the white field ones so this one was actually taken with my three times Barlow and this one without any Barlow so this is a complete field of view of 650 millimeters of focal length and my one and a quarter inch sensor of ZWO camera so the dimensions of this image is about 2600 pixels and the field of view is about 25.39 arc minutes so that's about 1523.4 arc seconds so just to convert our arc minutes to arc seconds uh, what you can do is multiply it by 60 so that gives you about 1500 arc seconds so the diameter of this crater in terms of pixels is about 138.7 pixels. So you can use the measure tool right here in GIMP to f find the width of your, that is the pixel size of the, cr of the crater. So our formula here is to first find the ratio between the entire image and the crater. So in order to do so, we're going to divide number of pixels the image has by the diameter of the crater in pixels. So I'm going to divide 2600 pixels by 138.7. So that gives us a ratio of 18.74. So what that means is that this crater is 18.7 times smaller than the entire field of view of the image. So that's not really the true diameter, but keep in mind that this is, is angular diameter, that is the field of view with respect to us. So I'm going to note this down here. So now that we know the ratio, uh, we can use this to find the angular diameter of this crater and that is going to be our angle that will help us find the, the true diameter of this crater. So the angular width of this complete image is about 1523.4 arc seconds. So I'm going to divide this by the ratio 18.74 and there we have it. So here we've got 81.29 arc seconds. So we have to convert this into degrees. So just divide this by 3600 and yeah this is the angular diameter 0 0.022 degrees now that we know the angular diameter we can use this to figure out the true diameter of this crater with the help of trigonometry so let's do it so don't freak out too much this calculation involves using very basic trigonometry so all you need to really do is find these two things that is the angle and the distance of the moon from earth 
So for the distance, I looked up online from NASA's website called the overview of the moon and that gives you the distance of the moon in real time. And I'm not sure how accurate it is, but it, thinking that it's NASA's website, I think it is pretty accurate. But what I did also try is checking the distance of the moon in real time from other sources. And it was approximately 399,742 kilometers, uh, according to NASA's website. So I checked on other sources and I thought I would just take 398,000 for reference. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We know the angle and we know the distance. Now our final equation in what is 10 of 0 0.02258 degrees is equal to the diameter of the crater divided by the distance. So you could rearrange this and write it simply as the diameter of the moon is equal to the distance multiplied by the angle. So in order to make the calculation a lot easier, you can convert degrees to radians. And since we know that tan of theta is equal to theta according to the small angle formula and that would just make the calculation a whole lot easier so let's just convert this into radians finally on multiplying the distance by the angle in radians we get the diameter of the crater which is 156.5 kilometers how cool is that guys Hundred and fifty six point five kilometers from the outer rim of the crater. Isn't it amazing what we can do from our own backyard? If you actually look closely into into the crater, you see another tiny crater right there. So I decided to measure it and its angular diameter turned out to be about 4.6 arc seconds. This is where things are getting really difficult to resolve with my telescope. So that gave it a diameter of nine kilometers. That is insane, isn't it? Check out my blog page where I posted a complete summary on how to do this. So thanks for watching as always. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and leave your opinions in the comments below. I'll see you soon.